division with remainders. It will be useful and helpful if you've looked through our previous division videos and also remember the better you are at your times tables the easier you'll find all these division questions. A remainder is what is left over after we have divided one number into another. For example, let's imagine I had 13 sweets and I wanted to share them out between four friends. So I'm going to do 13 divided by 4. So I've got my 13 sweets and I want to share them out fairly between four people. So just going to share those out like we did before in our other divisions. Remembering that everyone's got to have the same amount, so it's fair. So I've shared out the sweets so that everyone has three sweets, but there's one left over. So this one left over, this is our remainder. So we would write our answer as saying that 13 divided by 4 is 3. Everybody gets 3, but there's our one left over, which is remainder 1. Now, there is another way to think of this remainder. If I wanted to be really accurate about how this, these sweets had been shared out, I could think, well, that one sweet I've got left, if it was possible, I could actually break that sweet into four pieces, couldn't I, to share between the four people I have. And each person would get one of those four pieces, which is one quarter. So we can see here that the one remainder out of the four that we were sharing between in the first place is how we get three and one quarter as our final answer. So we can either say that our answer is three remainder one or we can say our answer is three and a quarter. Let's try another question. This time we're going to do 18 divided by four. So you're going to, let's imagine there are 18 sweets and you're sharing them between four people. So let's count the 18 sweets as I'm sharing them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Now I've got 17, 18, but I'm not going to be able to share those out between those four people. So I know that these two here are my remainder. So I can say that the answer to 18 divided by 4 is that each person gets 4 with a remainder of 2 left over. So remainder 2. If I wanted to be really accurate and chop up, chop up these remainder sweets, I would actually say that I had every person was given 4 sweets and then the 2 remainder divided by the 4 that we were sharing in the first place. So it's 4 and 2 quarters and we know that 4 and 2 quarters is the same as 4 and 1 half. Okay, let's try a couple of more questions. So the first question here is 32 divided by 5. So I'm going to think how many times does 5 go into 32? And if I can't remember straight away, well I can think, let's count up in 5. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I can't go any further because then I'll go past 32. So I've counted up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. And I can check that. 6 times 5 is 30. And how many left over to get to 32? I've got 2 left over, so it will be 6 remainder 2. If I want to write my answer as a fraction, I can say 6 with 2 out of the 5 that I was dividing by, so 6 and 2 fifths. Let's look at the next question. So this question is saying 41 divided by 6. So how many times does 6 go into 41? Well, if we're not quite sure, let's count up in 6s. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. Now I can't go any further because I'll go over my 41. So... I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six lots of six is 36. And then I need to see how many left over. So I need to count up from 36 to 41, and that's five. So I know my answer is six remainder five. Or I can write that as six with five 
out of the 6 that I was dividing by in the first place, 6 and 5 sixths. And the last question, so 53 divided by 10. So let's think, how many 10s go into 53? Uh, if I'm not sure, let's count up. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I can't go past there, so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5, lots of 10 is 50. Uh, I need to get to 53, so that's remainder 3. If I want to write that as a fraction, 5 and 3 out of the 10 I started to divide by, so it's 5 and 3 tenths. OK, now it's your turn to try some on your own, so have a look at these questions. You can pause the video and you need to give your answer. You don't need to put in a fraction if you don't feel confident doing that, just give your answer as a number with a remainder. OK, let's go through the answers. So 28 divided by 5 is 5 remainder 3. 31 divided by 6 is 5 remainder 1. 42 divided by 9 is 4 remainder 6. And 17 divided by 5 is 3 remainder 2. A little hint for you when you're checking your answers. Whatever your remainder is, it's not possible that your remainder is more than what you were dividing by in the first place. So always check that. Just make sure that your remainder has to be smaller than what you were dividing by in the first place. OK, if you were feeling confident and you also wrote your answers as a fraction, let's go through that. So the first one would be 5 and 3 fifths. The second answer would be 5 and 1 sixths. third answer would be... 4 and 6 ninths and the fourth answer would be 3 and 2 fifths. Remainders become very important in real life problem solving. So let's say for example we had this question. There are 18 children who want to go on the school trip. Each minibus can seat seven children. How many minibuses do they need? So we can see here that the calculation we need to do is 18 divided by 7. Now, 7 goes into 18, 7, 14, that's twice. And then 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, we've got remainder 4. But we can't leave our answer as 2 remainder 4 because the question asks us, how many minibuses? And there's no such thing as two remainder four minibuses. So how many minibuses do we need? Now, I think what a lot of people do is they think, oh, yes, look, two's my answer. Forget about the remainder. I need two minibuses. Well, let's have a look at that. So here's my two minibuses. I'm going to put seven children inside this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And seven children inside this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've got my two minibuses. I've got seven children in each. But the problem was, was that there were, there are not enough of the children or any minibus because the question said to us, there are 18 children. Well, I've got seven children here. And I've got seven children here. So I've only got 14 children in the minibus. So what happens to my four children who are left over? It would be a little bit mean to leave those four children at school and not allow them to go on the school trip. So what I actually need is an extra minibus. So what I'm actually doing, if I give these children their extra minibus so they can come on the school trip. So what I've done, although my answer is two remainder four, I've needed to round up my answer to the next whole number, which is three, to make sure that these remainder children actually get to go on the trip. So my answer would be, I need three minibuses and then all my children can go on the trip. Now it's your turn. So have a look at the question, read through it carefully, then you can pause the video, do your workings out, and then we'll go through the answer. OK, how did you do? So let's have a look. The calculation that you did would have been 24 divided by 5. We've got the 24 horses and they sleep with 5 horses per stable. So how many times does 5 go into 25? Well, it goes in 4 times because 5 times 4 is 20. And then we have a remainder of 4. 
Now, because I can't leave these poor four horses that are left over without somewhere to sleep, that means that my answer is I actually I need to round up. So I need, instead of four barns, I need five barns. I need to round up to the next whole number, which is five, and that means that all my horses have somewhere to sleep. So the answer is five.